Okay, so in this second part of this Java RESTful web service tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the POST annotation to send data from a web form to the web service as well as some other parameter types that we can use. There are three different parameter types. There is the query parameter, the form parameter, and then there's the path parameter. So in order to send a POST data from an HTML website or from um, another web client to a web, web service. We have prepared here now a, a HTML file with an HTML form. And this form uses the POST method. And it it's, uh, connects to this application. We have a, well, this web service. We have a web service called customer by region, which we still have to create. It's uh, under this application, under this path. Um, the name of the input parameter is region and the value but default value is east but of course the user of who loads the website it can change the this value can be changed to something else and then we have a submit button so if we um, if we run this one you can see it looks like this we give here a region west or east and then we submit the query all right so after making um, HTML form that uses the post, we can create a new web service. Last time we created a new Java class, a Pojo object, and then converted that to a web service. This time we can use the patterns. Um, okay, let's do that from the beginning. So if you don't have this one here, you can go to other. Then from here, you can find web services, and you have a lot of different wizards here. We will use the patterns wizard. You can also create web service from an entity class which will expose um, basically it will create an entity facade and exposes that one as a web service. Or you can create a web services from database. But this time we use the pattern and we choose the simple root resource. Um, the path will be as you can see here we have a customer by region so it was the same path customer by region the class name well it doesn't matter but we can follow the suggested one and in this case we use HTML as the MIME type we could also choose JSON XML whatever our application will need and that's uh, that's pretty much it let's finish now you can see that it injected some other things but uh, this is the most important this is the path that shows where the web service is located. Then uh, by default it also adds the get method and put method. Well, we don't need the put here, so let's delete it. Um, and the get method, well, it has nothing so far. It produces HTML. But the first let's add, well, we can return an empty string here, so it doesn't give an error. Let's add a post method and the both method is called, in this case, public string. Um, well, we can call it do post or get customer by region post, for example, like this. The name doesn't matter. And here we give a region name parameter. And then we can actually return here HTML. So let's write h3 customers by region and then here we would need to call the bean so we need to first inject something so I'll just finish up this one we call it manager get customer by customer count by region I believe that was the name of it and we can give the region as parameter so what is the manager? Manager is the EJP that we have created earlier. It's the customer manager here. This was created in the part one of this tutorial. So we inject it here using EJP annotation, customer manager, manager. And then we need to import that. And now this works fine. It will return a number that describes how many customers there are in this given region. We import the post method and something is still missing here. We need to specify 
what it produces and what it consumes. So two annotations, we add the produces. It produces media type. Uh, application form URL encoded. It's a special MIME type used by HTML forms when you use the post method. Okay, and there is still the consumes that we need to add. So consumes refers to whatever the input parameter is. What is the type of the input parameter? Uh, sorry, this is wrong. This should be consumes. The consumes coming from the form, so we use the form MIME type and produces, of course, this is HTML. Media type text HTML, like that. So we consume this MIME type it, this parameter will be in that form and we send back we return HTML okay and then it's not enough that we just write the parameter here especially if we use some other name like R um, in the HTML we used the parameter name is region so how do we map that form parameter to this variable the input parameter here well, we can use the form param annotation. So we say that the form param called region will be mapped to this input variable, input parameter. Of course, we need to import whenever we use new annotation. But that's, that's pretty much, that's the post method. Now we can deploy it, even though it will be deployed when we save it, but just to show you that it's deployed, we can go back to this website, submit query, and you can see now we have the customer by region, just like we have here customer by region in this web service, and result is 15. Okay, let's go back, let's change it to west, submit, customer by region 12. If we add something else that is not east or west, it will be zero. This is based on the beans logic. So to remind you, if you go back to the customer manager, we have an if else structure here in get customer account by region. If it's west, we return 12, east return 15, and otherwise return zero. So creating a post based web service is also easy. Instead of get, we use the post. And usually post is meant for sending data to the server. So we have some form of parameter here. So uh, rule of thumb in this web service is that post should be used for sending data to the server, get for receiving data from the server, even though in this example also the post will receive something. But okay, um, what if we want to add another get method here? So for example, this one now, let's say this method could return, um, it could return all the customers so h3 all customers manager get customer account so it returns all customers currently in the bean oh, and we need the plus of course there now the difference between get and post is that get we can load it. When we reload this website, it will actually be done with the get. So I will hit enter here. And now you can see the get method was loaded. So when we just load the website, you get the get method. Okay. And now what if we want to get only like a west or east region here using the get? Well, that's pretty simple. The get can also get some can, can receive some parameters. So let's here add a new method called get and public string get by region or get customer by region get. So we follow the same name logic than here. 
and string region that will be the input and we can pretty much copy paste this code uh, instead of r we have region so matching parameter right and this one is not is it's producing html so we can copy paste and in order to tell or to map a get parameter to this one we use the annotation called query param it works similar than the form param we give the name so in this case we use r i will show you in a moment what this r means okay so r here now this one is ready and now when we reload the page of course uh, the problem is that okay we have a, we have two get methods here um, so in order to have more than one get method in one path well we cannot do it so we need to add here another path so let's call it path by region now this by region will be added to the end of this path so we can write here by region like that oops null pointer exception let's see what happened no region is null okay of course uh, why region is null because we never give the parameter we could add here um, a default value west for example because otherwise it will be null if it doesn't have any default value if we reload it now we get the west by default now the r here it means that we can write here a question mark r equals east for example so this r is a parameter name that we give in in the get string so if we want to give any parameters using the get method we have to put those parameters to the url it's not very good if especially if you have a lot of parameters then you should use the post instead or if you for example send a password you don't want to send a password as part of the get string right so now if we reload it using the r we will get different results we get the customer numbers in the east or we can add there also west then we get the 12. so the thing is that if you use query parameter to get the parameter of the get string get method string then you should use the default value in case the user does not give or the client does not give any value for this r otherwise this will be null and as you saw if we use this one with the null uh, the bean here will result in null pointer exception because region is null of course uh, this can be avoided by the, doing the null check but in most cases you want to give some default value here right so now we have two different parameters we have the query parameter that is used for get and when we have a, a string like this one we have a, a question mark and some parameter name this is the query parameter and then we have the form parameter which is used to get um, input from the form so here we use the region and region is also here there is the third parameter type it's called path parameter so I'm going to show how to do that. So let's make one more get method that is producing also media type. That's actually that's a not in inside the quote media type text HTML. So you can see that I can either write with the constant or I can write manually the same thing. But you have to be careful if you do it manually because if you make a typo it will probably cause some problems 
So that's get and then public string get customer by region and call it path here. It's path parameter, so we just call it path. Not very innovative, but you uh, you get the point. And it's also a string region. Now, in order to define a path parameter here, we can simply write path. And instead of writing some finite, some constant path, we can use these braces to define a variable path. So for example, uh, region. And now we can do the same thing. We can return customer by region. And in order to connect this parameter to this one here, um, we can just call it also R. So we you see that they are different names. And then we use a path param annotation using the R here. So now whatever R, whatever the path is here, it will be inserted to this region. And to demonstrate how this works, now this will be inserted after the path here. So after customer region, we can have a slash and then either east or west. So for example, loading here, we, we go to customer by region and type east. Then we get the values from the east, customers from the east. And we can also write west, we get the customers from west. So this east or west, whatever we type here, it's going to be inserted to this path. So this means it's a variable path, we can use it as parameter. So we map it to this input parameter of the method and we can use it here. So again summary, we have three different kinds of uh, parameters that we can get. One is from the path, so we just type some value to the path and it will be used as a parameter. Another one is to use it with the get query where the query parameter is the one that you insert after the question mark in the URL. And the third one is to use the post method and then the form parameter when you send HTML form. All of them are equally good. You can send information to methods to web service using any of them. But if you have a lot of data, then perhaps the best way is to use either form parameter uh, yeah, form parameter is best if you have many, many, many elements to send. But you can also, later on, uh, we can show how to use JSON or XML to send an object, a Java object, for example, over the internet to a web service. So let's have a look at that one in the third part of this tutorial.